Good morning. Welcome to Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. My two guests in the studio, Ashley Burgess, three-time author and also talk show host. She's on 660 a.m. tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. Also 570 uh, a.m. on Sunday night at 8 p.m. So she's a syndicated talk show host and also... The name of your show is Perspectives, I believe, correct? Yes, Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Ashley is not just a talk show host, but she also has her master's in psychology, which is certainly uh, uh, fitting for this type of show today. But before we get into the type of show, we're going to say who the other guest is, and that is Kimmela Geis, my lovely friend of 18 years who was 140 pounds over fat. Over fat? I don't talk about overweight. Because you have football players who are in the greatest shape of their lives who are overweight by the government standards. Oh, well, that does make sense. Okay, so you were over fat and overweight. Can I be now? Can I be like 140 pounds under fat now? How Absolutely. That? <gasps> I'm going with that. I'm 140 pounds under fat. Under. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Oh, so, yeah. so don't start doing that camel thing. What day is it? Okay. <laughs> so today on the show, we're discussing what your authentic self is. We'll define being authentic and how the hell does being authentic translate into committing to fat loss, committing to exercise, committing to me of being motivated, committing to yourself, your relationships, and being successful at work. What does that look like? In the entire show today, we'll talk about how people have to conform and curate their persona to mesh with what is acceptable in society, what's politically correct, what's not. Should you live this way, or does it show up in, in, in being true to yourself and, and all of a sudden having these adversity that shows up in your life with people who can't handle you being authentic because they're not authentic, right? So I want to discuss all of that, being authentic, what it truly means, and how it's dynamic and not static in that it can grow. How is that? What does that look like? I want to quote um, something from a Harvard Business Review uh, uh, research that was done recently talking about leaders in the entrepreneurial world or uh, C-level executives who are trying to be authentic but are struggling with that in the corporate world. How does that affect them? So I want to make a give you a quote on, uh, on that article. So coming up next, we'll talk with Kimmela Geis, how she was not authentic or was she when she was 140 pounds over fat. Ashley Burgess, what her definition is of authenticity and how it can benefit you just by being authentic in your daily life. But we first have to identify what that authenticity is. Who are we? Have you identified it? We'll talk about that coming up next. 704 Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. Wake up, wake up. 711 <laughs> Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. My guests in the studio, Ashley Burgess and Kimmela Geis. We're discussing today, Kimmela, by the way, I didn't mention this, but Kimmela was on the show a few weeks ago, and uh, we talked about her formerly fat self. She was 140 pounds over fat, and Kimmela decided and not dieted. That's how she lost weight. She decided, she made a choice, she made a commitment to herself instead of dieting. And her Facebook page is Don't Diet Decide. That's cool. Yeah, I, and I have to tell you, it's very interesting. After we had, after I was on the show, I had so many people reach out to me, both people who had heard, you know, don't die at the side on the show, but even my own friends, where when they heard my story and we talked about the journey that I had been through, um, they felt like they could approach me and talk to me about some of their own issues, and it was, um, it, it, it's been really, really interesting. I think that's the best way to put it. And what I liked about you, just to interrupt for a moment, what I liked about you on the last show is that you didn't sugarcoat anything, you didn't try to show off, your ego wasn't getting in the way, you were just, here's who I am, here's who I was, and you became relatable. People felt like they, you were more personable, you, and, 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 and they could touch you. And so therefore, when you're relatable and your authentic self, which is what you were on the last show, you draw people in. Now, you have George DiGiani's authentic self that, and I was mentioning this when we were on a, on, on a break with both you and Ashley, is I gained a lot of strength between 28 and 31 years old, went to therapy, new, new perspective about myself and perception of the world, and I became my authentic self then. 
And here's what, what happened at that time is I began to piss a lot of people off. And I've even done that on the radio, but I don't do it on purpose. It's not malicious. I've done it because I'm being my authentic self. However, the people who say people from New Jersey are rude or New York are rude, we're very direct and we tell you what's on our mind. We're not trying to sugarcoat anything. So if we tell you we like you, we really, really like you and we'll do anything. We're loyal. We'll go out of our way to be there for you if you're in the hospital. My friend Tom is in the hospital, just had an appendectomy last night. I want to go visit him. You know, you do things when you care for people and you have a close network of people. And, and people who can not be intimidated by somebody who speaks the truth. Oh, by the way, that's being authentic. Telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Then, then you, you gain more close-knit friends, okay? If you have people who can't accept someone who is what they consider rude or truthful, then those people think you're a jerk, you're mean, you're, 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 you're all these different things, and they don't become, they're not in your circle of friends. And, and that's okay. Well, at the same time, I think, yeah, you can be authentic and you can be genuine, and in that, some people might find that to be rude or harsh. And if you're okay with people feeling that way about you, then that's fine. You know, we all have a different way of communicating and, um, and connecting to people. But I do think that it does take somebody who is strong to be around another person who is strong. Right. And it doesn't them. mean they're arrogant or a jerk. It means they're confident and truthful. Sometimes and I, they I, are arrogant. Sometimes they are a jerk. And, and, and sometimes <laughs> they are. You're right. But what I want to say, just comment on something real fast. You said, and if you don't care if those people don't like you. I actually do care, but I'm not going to sacrifice. And that's part of what the show is about, sacrificing who we are at our core. Who our thought authentic self is to appease other people because guess what? That's what I did my entire life until I was 29 years old. That's all I did. I lived my life for other people instead of living it for myself. I had huge anxiety. I wasn't happy with myself. And when that, that shift happened, all of a sudden I became happier. If I had an appointment for a client, I would always be a half hour early. A half hour. So if you have a lot of clients throughout the day, that it takes up a lot of hours of your life because you're anxious to make sure you're not going to be there late. And so when you're true to yourself, or in my experience, you just relax more and, and life is just better and you, and you don't have a problem speaking up for yourself. Not being a jerk, just speaking up for yourself. And when you're trying to help somebody, especially in this industry, you're helping them with the knowledge and experience you have and not sugarcoating it like we see in mainstream media, media on the radio, on TV, or in the radio, or listening to the radio or on TV. And we hear you know, how people sugarcoat things. Dr. Phil, successful, because he tells you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And I love that, and that's what I've adopted for myself. Ashley, do us, do us a favor. You have a master's in psychology. Define what authentic means to you. That's a good question, George. You know, I think authentic... It's just being completely honest with yourself away from what we've been taught as children. You know, we're raised a certain way, we're, we're brought up, we, um, we're educated a certain way. A lot of us have been brought to certain religious type uh, places where we either go to certain religions, we're either Catholic, we're either this, we're either that. And we're brought into this situation and we buy into all this, which is great because our parents are doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. However, let's step back and sit there and say, what is this? What in my life is really authentic to me? What am I buying into? What do I feel? What's my honest truth? And so I think a lot of times in order to be authentic, we have to step back and say, what means something to me? What is at my core? And I was recently actually at um, career day. I do career day in um, some local middle schools every year, and it's a lot of fun. And it's like sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And I was talking to the kids, and I said, the one thing, the one thing, I, you know, I wish I could have known this back then, is that that thing that you hate about yourself, that thing that just bothers you so much, for example, my voice. You know, when I was young, I had the same voice. I could never change it. I would so if somebody calls you at home and they say, hey, is, is your, is your uh, wife there? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I would call my friends up trying to help. Did you really have that? Yes. <laughs> They'd be like, sir, is your wife home? You know, or I, I got the best service. I still get the best service at the car dealerships because they all think I'm a man. So oh they'll be like, sir, we'll do the best we can. It's all under warranty, oh you know. Then I show up and they go, who the heck is that? You know, so. Oh, his wife. <laughs> is that his secretary? Who is that? <laughs> so there I am. So I'd, I'd call my friends up on the phone and I'll 
I was like, you know, seven, eight years old, having a swim party, you know, come over to the pool and have a swim party. And I would try to raise my voice really yeah. high to sound like the friends that I wanted to sound like, you know, yeah. and they'd be like, that's a really good try, Ashley. I'll come by. And so I, I wish I would have embraced my voice when I was young instead of hate on it. And I said, well, you, did you hate on it because you were made fun of? Or was it your own perception? I think it was because it wasn't... Um, like well, the other girls? Well, it wasn't like everybody else. You know, like, all my friends were, like, cheerleaders, and they had this really high little bubbly voice, and I went, if I could just have that bubbly voice, my life would be so much better. You know, now, I'm, thank God I didn't get the bubbly voice. I certainly wouldn't be on the radio. However, I was like, I always wanted that. And if I could have embraced that then and accepted... Sometimes we do get punishment for it, right? We get made fun of yeah. because there are certain things that kids get made fun of. Kids get bullied. Kids can be mean, and I tell which my, cha takes you away from being authentic. Exactly, because you're trying to hide that thing that you think is bad, that thing that makes you stand out in a crowd that you think, oh my gosh, I just, if I could just get rid of this, if I could just get rid of these big ears, if I could just get rid of this intelligence level where everybody makes fun of me because I always know every answer in the class, I could just blend in. Mm -hmm. And I think when we go through that as children, we constantly deal with that. And so as adults, we're still trying to hide those things that make us authentic. So, you know, our identities are on display. We're naked, if you will, because of the world of social media, right? Most we, definitely. We, we have to be careful with what we say and do. We can't have um, this, what we call chameleon self in the corporate world and get ahead or sheeple, like I say, you know, people are, so many people are sheeple, they follow other people. But, and then all of a sudden be authentic when we're in our private homes and on the internet and think that we're still private because we're not. No, the internet's changed everything. I mean, I, what do you think about it? Well, you know, it's funny. People laugh because I actually kind of document my life. I'm, I am a, um, a Facebooker, if you will, and I am constantly showing wherever I'm going and what I'm doing. I do think that, you know, in terms of being authentic, at some point you do reach a, a point in your life, and it's when you're willing to look at yourself and peel away the layers that you're able to embrace those things that do make you different. I mean... When I was probably, I guess, 21, I'm laughing because um, Rebecca Aguilar was a reporter on Channel 4. And I was maybe 20, 21, and I was working at Fox 4 uh, as an intern. And I, I came into the newsroom, and she was like, who are you? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, who are you? Where did you come from? I'm like, well, I'm an intern here. What, I, what did I do wrong? And if you know Rebecca Aguilar, you know she's a very authentic individual. She doesn't hold back. She says what she means. She says what she, I mean, she, whatever she thinks, she says it. There's no wondering. And she goes, you're like a chameleon. No matter where you go, you blend in wherever you go. You reflect with those people. And I said, I, I thought it was a bad thing. And she said, no, it's a wonderful quality because wherever you go, people feel comfortable with you. She goes, don't ever let go of that quality. But at the same time, while it was a wonderful quality for being able to go and interview people and fit in and make people feel comfortable, and that's something I've held on to, I also realized that, especially when I was younger, I was so concerned about what people thought about me all the time that I was so busy being a people pleaser mm -hmm. and trying to be what they wanted, but I wasn't what they needed. And quite frankly, me thinking I was being you know, a better person for them, I was holding back. No one ever really got to know me. And in that, you're really being a selfish individual. You're not allowing people to get to know you. You're not actually getting to know them because you're not opening yourselves up. Until you're willing to do that, and that goes back to even my weight loss issues, until you're willing to open yourself up and look at what's good and what's bad and work on the things that you don't like, you're not going to really be able to move forward. So that complements what I said earlier about where I was in my 20s before I went to therapy at 28. And I gained a lot of benefit out of therapy. I think there's there's more to being able to change and have it be sustainable. But, you know, I, I agree with you. When we talk about being a chameleon or sheeple and we have a health and fitness show, some people might say, well, what the hell does this have to do with me losing weight right now? And that's why I have you, Kimmel, on the show. You were not authentic when you were over fat, were you? I wasn't authentic in many ways because I was so, I mean. Are you I mean, authentic now? I think that I'm more authentic. I don't know that I'm completely authentic with everybody all the time because we are in a society and you do want to fit in and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, I'm absolutely authentic. Do people pretty much know what I'm thinking most of the time? Yeah, probably to a fault. Um, you know, some people, I openly say I'm obnoxious. I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize right now. Uh, I am. But I do think 
that, you know, we have to know the time and place. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you're more authentic with people that you're comfortable with, that you truly know. I mean, we do have to fit into a society to a certain degree. But when I was over, over fat, as you put it, yeah, I mean, part of what you're doing is you're protecting yourselves. You're living within these layers, and you have to peel these layers away. And part of that process, a really scary part of the process, when you were talking about going through therapy, a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to do that work. They don't necessarily want to face what they really are. Right. Uh, Ashley, are you your authentic self today, or are you just more your authentic self today than you were when you were younger? I think it's a I think it's a work in progress. I really am quite authentic. If I was going to give it a percentage rate, I'd say about 94, 95 percent. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a day to day work. I mean, I work on it every day, every hour of the day. But I've realized one thing in life is that any time you think that maybe not telling the truth or being honest is a good move, it seems to never work. And so it seems that the honest to God truth normally always works out because there's really no way around it. And so when you're being authentic and you're being true to yourself, you even feel that way because you create this um, image of synchronicity. And I, don't, I know that we talked about synchronicity in the past, and Young's like, thought process of synchronicity is based on being in the right place at the right time, doing what's right. And I think that the way that we create that synchronicity is by being honest about being where we need to be at the right time. And in order to be that way, we have to be authentic. We have to be true to ourselves. We can't be you know, personally medicating those types of things that a lot of times we find ourselves in because we're trying to find our authentic self, but a lot of times we need to take away. Don't add, take away. So I have to disagree a little bit, only because of those in the corporate world. They can't always be their authentic self, and they're struggling with this because it, you're conforming in the workforce, you're being politically correct, you're getting ahead, you're making friends, you're being that chameleon, and you're, you're very successful but in your professional life, but at the same time, at some level, you're inhibiting your personal growth and inner peace because you can't be yourself. So let's talk more about that, how our authenticity changes. I recently learned this in the Harvard Business Review article that I read, that authenticity changes, and that's the good news. You don't have to accept your authentic self now if you don't like it, whether you lack your authentic self that you'd like to have more of or tone it down a little bit. So we'll talk more about that with Ashley Burgess. Kimmel and guys, coming up next, 725 Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. 732 Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. My guests in studio, Kimmel and guys. 140 pounds under fat. Oh, very yeah. fit, looking great. And Ashley Burgess, uh, who What's has up? her own show on 660 AM and 570 AM. 570 is which day? Um, on Sunday nights, uh, 570 KLIF, right here, 8, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then you have tonight at 660, 7 to 9? 7 to 9 p.m. tonight on 660 or 92.9. So Ashley has her master's in psychology, and I thought it'd be fitting to have her come in the show today, or in the studio today, to discuss the um, uh, being your authentic self and how that affects your life. How does it help you to stay motivated and committed to your New Year's resolutions? Help, how does it help you to lose fat, to be more successful in your relationships? When you are, you are your authentic self, and I can't even talk, but it doesn't matter. When you're your authentic self, you tend to relax more. You have more inner peace. You're less worried about what others think, how they're going to perceive you, you know, and on and on and on. But there is this challenge, as I mentioned earlier, in the corporate world where you can only be your authentic self at a certain level because it's not going to be accepted, accepted by everybody else. Um, and, and even your family and friends might lambast you for being your authentic self. And so now you have this separation that really affects not only your professional life but your personal life. Here's a, a, an interesting um, view from the Harvard Business Review that I really liked uh, what they said. When we view authenticity as an unwavering sense of self, we struggle to take on new challenges and bigger roles. The reality is that people learn and change who they are through experiences. So when you look at who we are through being our authentic self, at different periods of our life, we were our authentic self, but we didn't express it necessarily to the corporate world or even our 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 
relatives, but maybe we do with our, our significant other or our children or when we're just alone. Because it's a compilation. Life is a compilation of our skills. That's what I got from this article. Compilation of your skills, your experiences, your unique expression. And, and it's, not, it's, it's not what you believe you're supposed to be. It's who you truly are. But are you allowing others to see who you truly are, right? right. And so what's really cool is I learned that we can be our authentic self for who we are today because of our skills and life experiences. However, Kimla, you lost 140 pounds. You surround yourself with different people, some of the old people still. You have new habits, new experiences. Oh, and you are now a different, more expanded, authentic self. Absolutely. I mean, but here's the thing about being your authentic self. You have to come to appreciate certain qualities about yourself. And, you know, and while you may not always be that authentic self with everyone, right. I think it's not so much about the struggle of being authentic with people, but finding a balance sure. in all things. What's going to be accepted by the person you're interacting with now? Right. Right. And, or, or, or in the meeting that you're trying to make, you have this big sales meeting or raise money for a business. You can be your authentic self, but do you know enough about that person? Have you researched that person? Did you have the opportunity to research that person to know how far to push? When you get feedback from the other person, are they being direct? And, and like you're being direct, maybe you know you can allow that part of your authentic self to come out. Maybe that part of your authentic self doesn't come out when you have somebody who's more timid. So Samantha's grandmother. She's, she's, you know, she's just set in her ways and she's really in, in, insecure with herself and that's fine, I'm not putting her down, but what we do is, when I speak with her, I have kid gloves on and it's hard for people, I'm sure, to imagine George with kid gloves, but really, really kid gloves because I know if I speak in my normal tone of voice, she'll just shut off. Well, and here's the thing though, in all people who we're having interpersonal relationships with, whether it's Ashley who I just met or you who I've known for, you know, since you were know, 12. Since I was a fetus. So there's, a, there's this ladder of, sure. of um, communication. And as you get to know somebody, you obviously can step it up, so to speak. You can be more authentic. Because uh, quite frankly, as, as awesome as you are, I'm not giving her all of myself. Sure. I'm not going to just put myself all out there. Be vulnerable. One, I'm not going to yeah, make myself vulnerable. And two, I don't know that I want to invest all that in her. No offense, I'm sure you're well, fabulous. I don't think that's about being authentic, though. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but I think that that's about just too much information sometimes. But you're being authentic with me in what you're showing me right now. Sure. But I'm not asking to hear everything, but yet, right. if you're being honest with me, I mean, because to me, I think that you can be authentic in every situation because I don't know why or what is getting in the way from you being authentic. I think the difference is, is the tonal expression. Like you said, kid gloves, you are being authentic to try to help somebody, but it's the deliverance. How do you deliver the message? Perfect, Ashley. You know, are you delivering it softly? Are you delivering it with a good pat on the back? Are you delivering it with, you know, you've got to get this right. cleared up because right. some people do need the direct. And you kind of figure out what level can I go at, but yet I'm still delivering the same message. Absolutely. And I'm glad to be on the show with both of y'all, and I'm glad that we're getting to know each other even better. And I look forward to getting to know you more, and I'm really proud of you for, for losing oh, all this weight. That's you. amazing. I told you she's awesome. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, had no, I had no idea. I had no idea. I don't rehearse my shows. It's amazing. I won't, I won't well, you're like, 100, I cannot believe 100, what, 140 pounds? I, yeah, 140 pounds. I'm half the woman I used to be. I'm proud to say and I feel much more authentic now that I've shed my, some of my layers. <laughs> so when you surround yourself with lazy people, people who like to gossip, even though if you're not that person, if that's all you have as far as your friend pool is concerned, you naturally take on those traits and it's not necessarily what you signed up for. If in business you surround yourself with successful business people and entrepreneurs and so on, you tend to want to learn more, expand your knowledge more, and be more successful, more driven. When I'm in school, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm in business school, I can't tell you guys, I, I feel instantly smarter and then the things, the stimulating conversations that we have with each other are, it, it, it's enough to fill up of an entire year's worth of conversations and I can't get enough of it. I absolutely love it. And so we become those we surround ourselves with. Oh, I totally agree with that 100%. And I think it's interesting, um, Ashley said something earlier that sparked something in my head talking about being authentic and that it's not always about where you are and this isn't exactly what she said it's just something that she said that sparked it but when you're around those people it can actually inspire you to really tap into um certain things about you and to grow those things like you embraced your voice you and literally embraced your mm -hmm. voice 
you know, and who you were, and from that you were able to grow. And maybe it's someone that you met along the way. I was talking about a coworker who literally pushed me, pushed me out into the open public, made me face myself, made me face my voice on air, made me go on the radio. And in that, I was able to embrace certain qualities that I, quite frankly, I hid away from, which was, you know, um, you know, sharing my opinion with people and things like that. Because I was always the person that kind of took care of people, made sure they sure. were they were good. You know, oh, you know, I was more concerned about them than me. And so I think. Do that you find that that's a common denominator with people who are really that fat that they're people pleasers? They're not being their authentic self. I do think that that tends to that right. tends to be that way. Or you'll find people that they have built up such a shell mm. they go from. And, and I'm not saying they felt all people, so please don't just send a me common nasty denominators. emails. But something you just, I tend to see, and I, I consider myself still to be a fat person to some degree, but you're either a big people pleaser or you just don't give a crap. Right. You know, you have Extremes. this shell. You know, you're, 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 you're patting yourself one way or another. Ashley, and, when are you your authentic self? Today, when, when is that? When does it show up? Um, every every minute of my day. Really? Every, every so it's minute. not when you're around your husband no. or, or, or at work or even here, it's you're always your authentic self? I figured out that when you are authentic in every way, shape, and form, you know, synchronicity becomes a part of your life. Once you realize that synchronicity is so important and you start seeing the facets of how life is really developed and we start really seeing those, people like to say, oh, it's a coincidence. And those coincidences start mounting up and mounting up to the point where you're thinking, okay, this whole day is very interesting because it's almost a map of my reality, it's there's no reason not to be authentic. I think a lot of times, and maybe even in your situation as well, a lot of times we might drink or eat our way right. into trying to hide our true feelings because we feel that the people around us won't accept us. Absolutely. And I think when we do that, the sad part is we're not allowing, like you said earlier, we're not allowing people to really get to know us. But if they really care and they actually are authentic themselves, they'll understand. Because I think at the core of every individual, their pure authentic self is brilliant. It's amazing. There's nothing wrong with it. Like you can never hate or dislike somebody for being authentic because it's being true. It's being honest. It's at the core. And and I think that a lot of times but people like children, but like Kimmel said, some people just aren't ready for that honesty. So now you've mm -hmm. turned them off. You didn't make a friend. Maybe it wasn't your intention, but it wasn't again, meant to be. Right. Well, sometimes you're not ready for the honesty yourself. You're so busy hiding from whatever it is that you have problems with. It really isn't the outside world. It's really all about yourself. And at some point, it's about being willing to open yourself up to yourself. So in relationships, we tend to be authentic with that other person when we're in the throes of the relationship and when the relationship is good. We tend to be unauthentic when there's strife in the relationship. So authentic also when we're trying to, um, well, okay, we'll go back to it. Authentic in a relationship, unauthentic when we're courting someone. Oh, right? These well, are more yeah, examples. I know what you're saying. Also, the strife, a lot of times the reason why we have strife is because we're not being honest about the actual issue between us. And they're all, that also could be a concentration of not being intimate with ourselves and then outwardly not being intimate to the spouse. But I want to add to that, though, because in a relationship we create our own monsters. So, so from the first time we have a sticky problem in a relationship, if we decide to avoid it, then you've just and then you wind up re resenting that person later on because you have this pent up uh, bunch of problems, or maybe it's the same existing problem that keeps uh, re re rearing its ugly head, and it's all because you avoided conflict, and and it's not the other person's fault necessarily; it's your fault because you weren't your authentic self because you're afraid they're going to leave you or whatever they, they were going they were going to whatever the response was going to be right that feedback. True. True that. True that. You know what's funny? Um, I was talking about this with a friend the other day. I have come to really like conflict. And I know that sounds, on the surface, it sounds harsh. But I don't think conflict has to be a bad thing. It's about how you approach it and how you deal with it. Well, it's also, isn't it also you having your own opinion? So someone says, the, the sky is blue with green clouds. Isn't it okay to have your own opinion and create some, be incongruent with the other person at times? I think so. I think. But there are people, the people, I just want to have to say this because it's important. People pleasers don't want to speak up and be incongruent. Stop talking about me like that. It's not nice. Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, no, but from conflict, you can grow. You can learn. So it's about what, how you want to approach it sure. and to handle it. And three, talk through it. But a lot of people don't want to get to that point. They recognize the conflict and they shy away from it because they don't want to deal with it. Whether it's about them or, you know, they don't want to upset somebody else. They have kid gloves, blah, 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 blah. 
But again, you can have conflict and you can learn from it and grow from it. It's just about how you approach it. And I think that is part of it does come back to being comfortable with yourselves and right. being willing to voice, you know, your opinion and where you, and where you're coming from. And I, I think that is part of being uh, your finding your authenticity and um, tapping into it. It's also part of how you express it. And a lot of people, you know, that's a big challenge. So Ashley, super quick, how many times in your practice have you heard of a relationship where someone felt they could not be their authentic self, whatever that looked like, communication or whatever was going on with their significant other, and then all of a sudden, that person on the other side, their significant other, cheats, or they work more, or they want to spend more time with their friends because they're not being their authentic self in the relationship. All the time. I mean, it happens quite frequently, oh, yeah, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, a lot. So, so I want, coming up next, I want you to expand upon that. And then after that, I want us to go right into tips. I have a really, really good tip for people to help themselves be more authentic and, and what that tip looks like and how you can work on yourself to be a more authentic so you can have more inner peace. Oh, by the way, it may show up in doing the extreme task that Kimala did of losing a bunch of weight, staying motivated and committed because she became her authentic self. We'll talk more with Ashley and Kimala coming up next, 745, Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. Wants to be one, tune us in, turn it up, keep it on. Sports Radio 1310 and 96.7 FM, the ticket. So we're going right into it's tips, the right? the Show, every Wednesday afternoon at 155 cool. on yeah. Band Radio. Brought to you by Top PM Stanley Motor Cars and Sports Radio 1310 and 96.7 so FM, the time. ticket. 752, Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show, about to wrap this up. Talking about being your authentic self today, what that looks like, how you can benefit from it, and actually how you can hurt yourself. You know, we really need to be strategic about what our authentic self is and how we deliver that message. Something that Ashley said earlier, and also Kimala. Um, one thing I aspire to be is to be liberated through expressing myself in all facets of my life to all different people and do so with abandon. I think I shared this on your show, Ashley, where Carlos Castaneda once said to Don Juan when they were about to duel, it matters not what our specific fate is, only that we face it with ultimate abandon. And so if you live that way, then you will naturally have some people run from you, and you'll also draw other, what I believe, I believe in my experience, stronger people into your life. You look at Samantha, you talk with Samantha, you think she's just this bubbly-headed blonde until you recognize Samantha is strong, can have an authentic conversation, and is intelligent. But when you just look at her, you might not see that because that's the judgments we make. My tip is to be your authentic self or learn through others is by modeling others who have the morals, the traits, and authentic uh, communication, if you will, that you'd like to model. That's my tip. And the people that I model for their leadership skills, their success, their personalities, not necessarily every one of them, so I know some people are going to laugh at me here on some of them, but Donald Trump, Ivanka Trump, when you watch both of them being interviewed on TV, how they communicate, they're both successful, they have great leadership skills. Um, Richard Branson, Mel Brooks, too long of a story, Mel Brooks, watch a documentary on him, love Mel Brooks, Mark Cuban and Michael Dell. That's my, my tip. Ashley, how can someone be more authentic? Authentic. What's their takeaway uh, that you can give them today? You know, George, I think the first thing is how does it feel? Uh, in life, we live our life every day. We wake up, we go through it day after day. We go to work, we do this, we do that. When things feel right, it just makes sense, okay? So when we're stressed out and we're not being ourselves, guess what? Things become more difficult. They become more stressful. And you know why that is? It's because we're not being honest. We're not being our authentic self. And this is a good try for everybody that's listening, all your listeners. When you're going into a situation that you feel like you not you don't need to be yourself or you shouldn't be yourself, try not being yourself and see how stressful mm -hmm. that makes you. See how overwhelmed with either upset, angry, grief, or just like, I, I don't anxiety, even know why I did this. Anxiety. But when you're your authentic self, no matter what, the stress level's gone. You don't feel upset, you don't feel angry, you don't feel on edge. Right. And that is a good significant tip to being authentic on a daily basis, which is cool because it actually, you know, your stress level goes down and you feel better about yourself, you know? My tip would be to decide. Decide to challenge yourself, to be open to others, to be open to yourself, 
if there's something that is standing in your way, I want you to push yourself a little bit, you know? I think it's really about us making decisions daily and layering this over time. And as we do that, we will become more comfortable. So Ashley Burgess, Perspectives, radio show, 660 AM tonight, 7 to 9 PM. Also tomorrow night, uh, Sunday night, 8 PM, 570 AM. Kimmela Geist, you can go to her Facebook page. Don't, uh, d uh, d uh, hold on, I'm gonna change that because I wrote a whole thing up here for myself about how I introduced you earlier. Uh, don't diet decide don't diet decide on our Facebook page and I'd like to leave you th with this closing thought we are people if you've if people have heard me long enough they've heard me talk about how our body is constantly giving us feedback symptoms although it's not in English it's in symptoms whether it's sleepless nights fat gain uh, uh, or all, even your blood work your cholesterol's uh, out of balance and, and blood sugar and so on we're constantly given feedback but emotionally, mentally, we're also being given feedback. What does that look like? And how do we nurture ourselves and our desires? You're getting the feedback, but what do you need to do to get what you desire? And so my last empowering statement is, your authentic self is speaking, are you listening? And I think if, if, if we take that sentence and a few other sentences from all of us today and, and write that down and really listen to one. ourselves. That's a good one. Thank you. If we really listen to ourselves, we may not make the change right away. But like I said earlier, when we defined being authentic, it's experiences, skills, learned traits. And as you go on and you have new employment or a new role within your, your job or you become an entrepreneur or write a book, You've adopted new skills, new experiences, and become a new authentic part of you. Whether you choose to share that with everybody or not is, is still your choice. I'm just glad to be on the show, George. Thanks for having me on. This Thank is an you. awesome show, and I hope that most people are being authentic or at least working toward it. You guys want to talk? T-Box is in the other studio, so we'll have them come up in here. But, um, uh, Kimala, I'd like to have you on more because we need that female voice that does two things. Number one, I think it keeps us men in check. And y'all need to be kept in check, quite frankly. We absolutely right, do. Ashley? And I think <laughs> I think with your You're duly appointed to do that. I think with your extreme weight loss that there are, are so many people that can relate to you. I'd like to have another or more call in shows with you on because it, it would really, really help a lot of people to get out of the way of the guy who's been there that helps people with knowledge. And then you have somebody like yourself who has knowledge that you gained through your experience and changes. It's that relatability, the personal factor. And I'd, I'd like to have you on more. Well, I would love to come in and share. And you know, I think at the end of the day, it's all about what you said in the past. It's about progression, not perfection. We're all just chipping away at it, trying to be a better little work of art.